Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast, episode 124. Welcome to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast with your host, Jack Mountain Bushcraft School founder and master main guide, Tim Smith. I'm your host, Tim Smith. I'm a registered master main guide and have been a full-time outdoor instructor and guide since founding the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School in 1999. We help people become more skilled, more knowledgeable, more experienced, and more confident in the natural world through our bushcraft and guide training semester programs and multi-week canoe and snowshoe expeditions. You can check out the show notes to all of our podcasts at blog.jackmtn.com. If you're interested in learning more about our college-accredited and GI Bill-approved programs, visit the Jack Mountain Bushcraft School on the web at jackmtn.com. And check out our online network and digital learning academy at bushcraftschool.com. Hello and welcome back to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft podcast. I'm your host, Tim Smith, and I'm here with Rick uh, and Oz from the last several podcasts. And these guys both joined me on the Wilderness Canoe Expedition Semester as instructors. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit different than the last couple of podcasts. I feel like the last few have sort of been current events and what we were up to. And today we're more in the process of scheming for the future. So some things that are coming on the calendar this year. Uh, but big picture, the problem, as we were discussing this morning over coffee, is that perishable skills perish over time. So, you know, people come out here, they, they do a big long course, and then if they go home and put those skills and experiences on the shelf and don't, don't dust them off regularly, uh, sometimes they disappear. So I think the solution to that, or a solution that we came up with, was having short courses, advanced uh, week-long courses, hybrid courses. So some some of the stuff will take place online and some off, and and trips for experienced people. So we've been doing this. We haven't necessarily labeled it as such, but uh, for example, last winter, a couple of alumni and I went down the lower canyons of the Rio Grande on the Texas-Mexico border for 83 miles. Um, the week after next, I'm headed up to the Gaspe Peninsula in Quebec to run the Bonaventure River with a handful of alumni. Uh, so, you know, advanced polling trip, advanced uh, canoe trip. Um, and we're going to formalize, you know, some more of these. And, and as we were talking, these guys are planning on running an advanced solo canoe course this September, right? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, so the this course, something that these guys did last year, uh, and they'll tell you more about it, was so for our Wilderness Canoe Expedition semester, we've got the Engage certification. And it's a weird word to say. I got the word from an old book. And essentially an Engage in Quebec back in the day was a working canoeman, also known as a guide Uh so it was just a random term that I picked out of an old old book. Um, but we've got our level one uh, and level two Engage certs here in-house. And both of these guys had those. And working together, the three of us have schemed up like a level three. So level one Engage cert means that you're qualified to go out on flat water. Level two, we add the moving water. So moving water polling strokes and maneuvers and white water paddling, things of that nature. Uh, level three we came up with was really about going out and actually doing a trip by yourself. So, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about the trip that you guys took last year and, and, and we'll use that as a springboard for our ideas for the day yeah i think that was the uh the catalyst for a lot of this is is rick and i um went on uh, a solo trip last year for i think uh six days on a beautiful river right here local that is uh pretty remote um definitely takes another skill level when it comes to pat uh polling um especially at the water level we were running it and i think it really tested our skills in a lot of ways um that we felt maybe got covered in in the first engage, but when you're by yourself or when you're with 
just maybe one other person, I think you have to start considering some different things. And I think that your skill level um, suddenly be, becomes a lot more important because you have no one else to rely on. And um, so from there, you know, we just started kind of brainstorming, you know, what would be the next level and what does, what does, what sets aside solo tripping in, in comparison to tripping with a group of folks and what does that mean that I need to be prepared for? So, you know, that kind of launched us down the rabbit hole of, um, figuring out what those things are and what, what separates it. So, um, yeah, that's where this course was born yeah. for the most part. And we, we kind of wanted to add a, a different layer to it. So when we finished the level one and level two, I mean, we're following Tim. He's a master main guide. Um, we go over um, pre-planning, trip planning, but we wanted to do a trip that we had never been on. Um, so, you know, we wanted to start from the very beginning, like pick out a river we haven't been on um, and, and figure out all the logistical pieces and all that stuff that, you don't really get in the level one and two because it's all kind of being done for you. So we wanted to be able to go out, do things on our own and kind of take things to the next level. And me personally, I didn't feel comfortable going out by myself alone. So doing this process with Oz, we, we, we learned all the pre-planning stuff that we need to do to, to make a solo trip in the future. And we wanted to be able to do this for, people that have been through the level one, level two, kind of like we talked about, the next level, like give you the confidence to trip a plan and go out and actually do it and learn from your mistakes and and gain that confidence. Like I, I, I totally feel comfortable now going out solo after four years of, of doing this. Um, I finally feel comfortable being able to do this on my own. So we want to bring that to, to the audience. Yeah, I think... Um kind of the description of the course is, is you know, we want to uh, prepare the experienced canoeist um, for solo expeditions in wilderness environments, right? In remote wilderness environments. And that, that doesn't just mean here in Maine, right? We, this ultimately is a guide school. And a lot of us go home to states where canoe, uh, canoes aren't a big deal or rivers haven't been run in a long time. And we're always looking for those opportunities if you're anything like me. Um, you're always staring at maps, you're looking at rivers. And what this does is you'll be able to leave this course and properly plan and execute a solo uh, river expedition anywhere in this country and know that you have the skills to be there. Um, and not only that, as from a guide's perspective, right? It opens up rivers that maybe weren't open before and you can start guiding those rivers locally maybe do one day trips or overnights or whatever it is you can do locally in your area but um you know all those things have to be explored first before you can start taking out clients and i think that's what we're catering to is is uh opening up these routes and what does it take for me to be out there by myself which you know even on this last trip we were dealing with medical stuff which we talked about last time and you know, we're going to be talking about, you know, what do we do if something happens to me that I need medical attention when I'm out there? So, you know, that's something that Rick's really going to be able to dive into. Well, you guys came up with a list of like 12 course objectives for this, right? Yeah. Let's uh, let's pick the high points and kind of go through that. Like so, what, what, would, what would people be, what would they learn? Yeah. So part of the, the um, trip planning process, we're going to, we're going to focus on, uh, potential medevac sites like somebody gets cut like on this last trip and I'm 20 miles from town where's the nearest road where um, can I bring this person to or get evacuated or yourself because um, this is going to be a, a, a course that focuses on solo canoeing so it's really important to have all this stuff figured out ahead of time so that when and if you do need it, you're not trying to figure it out on the fly. Um, and these are all things that, that Oz and I kind of experienced last year when we did this trip. Um, one of the main objectives that I think is going to be really special in this course is equipment field repair. What happens if you put a hole in your boat and you're 20 miles from 
from town. That happened. Did did you determine that there is a hole in your it's boat after just, the... It's just about there. And I if I would have hit probably one more rock, it'd be over. So, so. If, if we traveled 11 more feet on that river that we were just on... You... Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so... I mean, these are all, uh, like he said, you know, we're, not only with trip planning are we talking about EVAC sites, but, you know, map studies, right? How to look at a map, um, how to read contour lines. Okay, maybe nobody's run this river in a while and there's no rapids listed. So now I'm reading contour lines on a map and I'm looking, okay, there's probably going to be rapids here. Now I can look at a, sa- a satellite photo from Google Earth or whatever and I can contrast that. But I know how to basically look at a map. I know how to study maps and study satellite photos. I know how to I know how to pick my routes. You know, for someone like me who's looking at possibly going up to the UP, I know a lot of the rivers up there are overgrown. They have a lot of deadfall, a lot of streamers, right? So for me to do map studies, um, I also need to be contrasting those with satellite photos and seeing if I can see any of the downfall, knowing when those satellite photos were taken. And, and even, you know... Uh, looking up old literature that that describes that river, right? And so I can, I I really am going to dive into, um, in that planning phase, how to plan my routes and and, and, uh, accomplish what I need to accomplish, right? Which then leads us into navigation. Um, Again, we're not going to be doing, you know, in-depth land navigation, but we're going to know how to shoot azimuths. We're going to know how to shoot intersections and resections. We're not going to know how to use a compass, um, you know, self-aid, when you're out there by yourself, say self-aid is going to be super important. So Rick's going to talk about, you know, uh, getting the stop the bleeding certification. Um, and, and, and then a lot of just review, right? N- knowing how to use that axe properly, knowing how to use the knife properly. Um, you know, how do I swing an axe when I'm trying to f- clear deadfall or a strainer, right? What are the things I need to be thinking about when I'm using my tools in a situation where I'm not on the ground and that tree isn't standing straight up, right? So we're talking about advanced skills with with pretty much everything. Um, so just so we're clear, though, this isn't like a basic intro. Like this is for experienced people, not for if someone doesn't know which end of the paddle goes in the water, this was not an appropriate. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah, this this we is not... we just don't have the time. You know, we're looking at uh, a seven day course, and we just don't have the time to to go over the basics. So this is really for alumni or people that that have uh, those those basic skills down. And and we're speaking to the you know to that explorer side of us, right? That 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 sense of adventure that we all have, that thing that makes us stare at maps for hours at a time and look at rivers that we may or may never uh, float, right? But this this course is going to appeal to that sense of adventure and it's going to give you the skills needed so that when you do stare at that map, you know you can tackle any river um, or any lake or any area that you need to, that you feel that you want to go out into. So I think that's a key point, right? Is it, 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 it speaks to that explorer, to that adventurer side of us. And you guys are planning like, Two days in camp, skills review, trip planning, and then three days, three days in the field. So three day trip. Yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Uh, location yeah. to be determined. People always want to know where you, where we're going to be exactly and when, like a year out. But we never know more than a couple of weeks out because of water levels, and especially in the fall. Like last year when you guys went on that trip, you had great water, but usually in the fall it's a lot drier. So. Uh, you know what? To one, be determined. One thing too, I wanted to talk about. Um, a, a big catalyst for this was um, during our spring trip that we just took a few weeks ago. Um, I went into the water. It was cold outside. The water was cold. Um, I lost my canoe. Had Tim not been there, I mean, I, I don't know what would have happened, right? And that immediately made me start thinking about, you know, what do I do when I'm by myself? How do I? How do I uh, get out of this situation? How do I pack my gear differently? What do I wear differently, right? And and I think that um, that is another layer to this course that you won't find anywhere else, right? And I think that um, we've really thought about these things because 
we've experienced them or we're going to be testing these things, you know, with, with the, the prospective student and getting their input. What did they see out here and, you know, kind of really putting this course together um, in the best, most professional way. So I think it's a great, uh, great idea. Something that the industry needs. I, I interrupted you, Rick. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. I was just going to cover just one of the, or two of the other objectives that we kind of, been thinking about based on experience from from our solo or trip that we did together last year um so we're going to be doing a, a stop the bleed certification in this course so students will leave with a stop the bleed um cer certification and um also the the field gear repair uh portion like last year i had my pole break right in the very beginning of of our trip and trying to figure out how do I repair that and um, we learned some some valuable lessons on on that that we're going to be sharing so these are all the things that are going to be based on things that have happened to Tim Oz and I and you know we really put a lot of thought into this over the past year of how can we get somebody comfortable and confident to the point where they can go out solo by themselves so which is <clears throat> which is the ultimate goal, right? Empower people so they can go do awesome things. Uh, I think as part of, I'm going to volunteer my services um, for the Stop the Bleed thing, <clears throat> but we're going to run a workshop the day prior. It's called Start the Bleed. <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of like sharp axes and tools and moonshine and, and uh, dancing. <laughs> Great dance. So yeah, unless... You know, unless someone's bleeding, you can't stop it. So we're going to have to, we'll have to cover that one. <laughs> the less you know, the less you care. Yes. Uh, yeah, all that sounds great. So you guys, you had dates for this already, right? Yeah, we're looking at 15 <clears throat> to 21 September of this year. 2024. Great. Yeah, excited. So we'll be busy. I'll be busy. That kind of falls right in the middle of our fall uh, wilderness bushcraft semester. Um, so, uh, but you guys are going to base that one here at the field school and then on a, probably a nearby river. Is that, yes, sir. Is that a accurate? Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. And kind of the, the other component to this is that there's going to be, uh, I think you guys said you're limiting it to five people and for the people that sign up, you know, probably you're going to want everybody who's coming on board like a month in advance to do the online portion stuff mm -hmm. uh prior to the field experience and yeah. that's something we're really working on this year i've been threatening to do it for years but we've got all the pieces in place now of the online guide school uh hybridizing most of our short programs so that people can maximize the the usefulness of the time they have in the field with us by getting a lot of the uh basics out of the way in advance of the field time so yeah we got that going for us i think too just having um a bit of a vetting process for especially if we're going to move into um kind of doing these one week advanced courses for prior alumni we want to make sure that you know you're, you're keeping up with your skills to some extent so that you're showing up and we're not having to spend all our time doing acts and knife reviews and going over safety right we want to know that you have um, the basics still uh, learned and then we can kind of take off from there. Yeah, I think it's a great plan. Would people be able to do the start the bleeding before they arrived and then stop it when they're here? Um, I'd have to look into that. There, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure we could figure something out. We'll give them a head wound when they turn on their road. <laughs> That's a good plan. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I don't I don't have a ton else for today. We just wanted to kind of tease that out there. By the time this episode goes live, uh, there will be a link to the web page about this course, and we'll recreate all of that web content on the the notes for this episode of the podcast, so you can uh, read up on the course and all the criteria for what's going to take place, what you learn, that sort of a thing. Um, uh, great. So 
you've uh, wasted another <laughs> bit of time listening to us prattle on. Thanks for doing so. And we'll hit you back again in a little bit with another one. Have Take a great day. Take, Take care. care. You have been listening to the Jack Mountain Bushcraft Podcast. For more information on our professional wilderness guide training programs that are college accredited and GI Bill approved, visit us on the web at jackmtn.com.